basically, Shanghai Adventures is something we created uh, about uh, October of 08. Uh, this is our website, shinyheart.com. Um, it, it focuses on creating community-driven products that remind us of the joys of life. And that's what we're really all about. We want to create great products that remind us of, you know, make us feel good. So our first product is called thankfulfor.com. You can go there and check it out. Uh, and we'll talk more about it in a little bit, but it's, in simple terms, an online gratitude journal with social, social features. So we'll be talking more about it soon. So together, we, we kind of have this interesting philosophy. Uh, we both live and work from anywhere. Uh, because we're on the road, we're on the road quite a bit, it's, if we didn't work while we're on the road, we'd get nothing done. <laughs> so we're constantly connected to our iPhones, our, our laptops. Um, I'm, I'm streaming videos live from wherever I am, uh, taking photos, Jen's taking photos, and we're posting and sharing our life and live streaming what we're doing. Um, and so much that we actually, this summer, we're covered it as the Sunday feature in the Washington Post as the digital nomads, uh, as we work from a number of different places, including trains. We took a train down, uh, trains, planes, automobiles, boats, pretty much you name it, we, we work from it. Um, and this summer, you know, we traveled thousands of miles doing it. So uh, and continue to be able to launch a product. So, Jen, you want to take it away? What I wanted to just start off with is, I think when it comes to entrepreneurship, it all starts with this, you know, this little nugget, this burning desire from within you to do something whatever that thing may be. Um, and our philosophy is, is, especially coming from someone who sat behind a desk for 12 and a half years, um, we're doing the world a disservice when we take those ideas and passions that are burning within us and we bury them and push them back into the cobwebs of our, our brains. Um, the world deserves these ideas. We, we deserve to spend some time working on these things and bring them to life in whatever form that may be. So that was a, a that was a big driver for us. Um, really, neither one of us are people who wanted to just watch life go by and forget about all those dreams and passions. Um, and we really want to help other people when they feel that desire to figure out a way to bring it to life. You know, ideas. If you have those ideas, you got to let them out. A lot of people go to the doctor. We we literally let them ooze uh, in this kind of fashion. Um, so. You know, ask yourself, how can I do this? You know, like what can it take in your current situation to do this? And that's really what we're all about. Trying to, you know, figure out the nooks and crannies and how we can get things done. Once you get that burning idea and you decide I'm gonna do something about it now, typically for most people who have some type of day job, the big question is, can I leave it? Um, or am I gonna try to do something on the side or part time? And it really, um, it's so different for everyone and we have a couple different perspectives on that. Um, but the point is that everyone has a unique situation. Everyone works for a different type of business or company. They have different types of managers. And so you really have to examine that situation and figure out, is there a way to make this work? And in some cases, you may actually be able to make it work. You may be able to talk with your management and figure out a solution and a way to, to carve out your time. Or, um, and one thing that's, that Frank is going to talk a little bit more about later um, is transparency. We highly recommend that if you're going to do something on the side while you're working for an employer, figure out a way to make sure you are completely upfront about everything. It may seem like it's completely irrelevant. Maybe you're, what you want to do has nothing to do with the job you work in, but you'll never know like if, if all of a sudden one night your product or your business or whatever it is that you're doing on the side is on like Channel 7 News, your employer may not appreciate that as much as you do. I basically have to be very transparent what I'm doing. So when I came in day well, I had you know these things I was doing. I was very transparent with HR and corporate communications. To say, hey, I'm working on these things, and I think you guys can leverage that positioning to kind of help you as a connector. So um, you know what I've done in, in you know since being there over three years is continue to communicate and make sure that you know things that I do outside are you know are very transparent, but also uh, consistently doing a gut check assessment. Okay, you know. Am I moving my businesses forward, including Shining Heart? Am I, am I also adding value to AOL? Am I also um, still motivated to help AOL? And are there benefits for me being and doing all these things? Because ultimately right now, you know, I literally have three jobs. You know, I'm constantly working on them and trying to, trying to make sure that they're all moving forward. So it's an interesting situation and I actually wrote my job description for AOL uh, and actually took it to my VP and said this is what I'm gonna be doing. I think you guys can benefit from it and you know, in such, I've brought 
aim, which is the product I'm representing, to places that they wouldn't have been before. Another one of our philosophies, something that we've, we've really worked on, is, uh, is we believe in, when you, when you have those ideas, that you need to think big. Um, don't just settle for whatever your little idea is. Brainstorm around it. Think about what, in, in its biggest potential, what could it be? And really you know, use that to motivate you, but if you get too caught up in that, you may never get started because it just may feel too, too big and onerous of a project to, to really dive into. So think big, but start small. So for us, we actually we had a lot of baby steps. Um, you know, number one was just, okay, let's, let's just come up with a company name. Let's launch a website. Let's um, you know, write some blog posts about it and little things that could kind of keep us motivated and, and kind of roll into bigger things. We found that, wow, no one is telling us what to do. There's no roadmap here. Um, so how do we stay focused in all these, you know, in all the moving pieces and parts to creating this vision that we want to create? Um, and for me, it was a, it was a, a whole new challenge because up until leaving AOL, my life was so busy. And you know, a lot of my friends, I was traveling all the time. I had stuff to do at home, stuff to do with my family, just all over the place. And then all of a sudden, I found myself. I woke up in the morning. And the whole day was mine, and that is actually a really huge challenge. Um, there are so many distractions everywhere. I could very easily lose half a day to just being on Twitter or Facebook or reading blogs or whatever it is, and I've done that. And um, what I found was it was critically important for me to create some, some, um, some structure, some artificial constructs to my day. So I actually started, you know, I, I created this document where every week I created my to-dos and every morning I get up and I have my lists and I, I um, find it extremely important to write down everything I've done every day. So I don't care if it's, I went for a walk, I returned a library book, I wrote some code, I designed something, whatever it is, I have to do that so that I can every day and every week kind of create that structure for myself and keep things moving. Um, and for Frank, it's a completely different story. All the time. So I've got these constraints that I've got to work in. Uh, number one priority is get the day job stuff done. And if you're traveling a lot, it, you lose a lot of time in airports and whatnot. So what I've found is that with these three things that I'm working on all the time, I've constantly found myself looking for the little nooks and crannies, uh, looking for those little pieces of time that are dead time and leveraging them the best of my ability. So obviously on planes, you know, that's my email checking, catching up kind of thing. Um, driving on the way to work, I'm either sending myself memos or um, I've got a personal assistant actually that is in India that helps me as well. Um, that, that helps me get things done as I'm, you know, during the day while I'm working. Uh, and you can do that. There's a number of services that allow you to do that. Obviously they're not like paying my bills and doing all sorts of things that are more personal, but there's little, you know, nuggets that I can, I can send away and have them do, do those pieces. <laughs> I don't get a lot of sleep, and I think that's my own um, my own choice. I do a lot. I stay you know stay very active, but ultimately, when I you know the weekends and whatnot, my free time is literally like working on this stuff. But the great part about it is I'm really passionate about it. So it's not like it's not like work to me. It's fun. Like I have a good time with it. So make sure that you pick something when you're doing different things that you love. Because if you love it, time flies when you're having fun, right? I'm notorious for I need my eight hours of sleep, but I also believe that. The second you learn to spell the word entrepreneur and we pick that path, you're signing yourself for, up for you know late nights and weekends and whatever it might be, whatever it's going to take to get your vision out there. Um, so it's it's uh, again it goes back to self discipline and, and figuring out how to create a structure, how to find flexibility, whatever it might be. Um, and no matter how much focus you have and, and you have your routine or you have your priority list, whatever it is, nothing. It's, it's been fascinating to us. Nothing can really prepare you for the curveballs that get thrown at you. And this is one of my favorite quotes, is it's easy to be heavy and it's, it's hard to be light. And it's so important. And it's funny because it's one of those lessons you, you almost have to learn over and over and over again. Um, but the more you kind of get complex and you're trying to build this whole flux capacitor thing, um, you like just never you like, if you, you just, those red flags have to go off and you have to figure out how can I scale this back? You know, and we will eventually get there. Every little step and every positive um, piece of feedback we get is-, is it's Nuggets of traction is what we're yeah. looking for. Continue to move forward. We're here all day, so if yeah. anyone wants to find us, we're happy to talk. Yep, thanks a lot.